Hi everyone, my name is Vinicius and this is Two Comics. Peter, can you do something like it? Yeah. Yo. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Make him the cutest that I've ever seen. Well, today we have here Peter Milliken, a great writer known for his work on Marvel, DC Comics, uh, Vertigo. Peter, I can say that I never read a bad comic written by you. Oh, really? You haven't looked hard enough. They, they are out there. Yeah. There were some. Um, there were some. I'm less in. There were some I'm less happy with than others. But you know, that happens. I can't tell you which ones they are. Uh, but you know, I mean, some comics you write and you think you're really happy with them. You really kind of think they've hit the mark. Others, you don't quite, they don't quite work as well. But that's just what happens in the creative business, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's a great honor to meet you here. Well, it's great honor to meet you, man. Well, let's start with uh, Hellblazer. Mm -hmm. uh, your run on Constantine is, I think, is different than the others. Mm -hmm. Like what uh, Jamie Delano mm -hmm. or Garth mm -hmm. done with the character. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your idea with John? Okay, well... Clearly, what I didn't want to do was just to follow what other people had done. Um, I think that the strength of John Constantine is that he can have inconsistencies in his character. And I think that those inconsistencies in his character make for a believable character. I think in reality, uh, people uh, contradict each other, contradict themselves. They do have contradictions and they do have inconsistencies. When I can... It seems to me that uh, Constantine, when I started Constantine, someone said all you have to remember is that he's a bastard. <laughs> and actually, I disagreed with that. I think that he did things which were bastard-like, but I felt that in himself, he wasn't actually a bastard. I've met a few bastards. And John Constantine had a moral sense. He sometimes fell from what he wanted to do. He sometimes disappointed himself, but he did have a moral sense somewhere within all that within all that irony and within, within all that within all that negativity so what I, I, I was interested in looking at the heart of John Constantine because I thought he did have a heart and I wanted to do stories that explored his heart so we, we he has relationships with girls and he eventually kind of gets married yeah yeah well he completely gets married well um so, uh, let me read. Peter, when someone asks you to write some comic, how work uh, your research process? Uh, it really, it really depends. Um, usually, it works. Usually, it's the the other way around. Usually, I'm really obsessed by something. I'm really interested in something, like Greek theatre. Or, or like something else. And because I've got this obsession, a story has grown from that research. Once I know I'm going to do a story, I might do a bit of re-research, but actually, often, the research comes first, and it's not even seen as research for myself, because it's just stuff I'm really obsessed and interested in. And from that, story ideas sometimes flow. And how uh, it work with Hellblazer? You really read all the issues before you start? Yeah, I mean, uh, I reread them, and I also had an editor who uh, I demanded kind of would. Sometimes you do something, and it contrad. I, I didn't mind a character contradiction, uh, as I said earlier. I think that character con contradictions create an inconsistency, which is good. But you don't want things to happen and references to be made to things which simply didn't happen. So I wanted it to be true to what I didn't want it be. I didn't want it to be a slave of what had happened before, but I also wanted it to be true to what happened before. So it was myself and whatever editor I was working with. Uh, we, you know, made sure we didn't make any huge errors. And uh, sorry, sorry. Let me read. Sorry, guys. I'm not the best. No. Okay. You're doing very well. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That will be very hard. I, I really, uh, 
Ok. Pip. Cortou? Mm -hmm. Pip. Isso aí. Uh, another thing. Um, how is to be... Uh, how... how ah. One minute. Mm -hmm. How was to be the writer... Uh, tá. How was it to be the last writer of Hellblazer? Yeah, uh, ok. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> let me talk. I will cut you. I said, why don't I ask the question? And I'll answer the question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Peter, how was to be uh, the writer of Hellblazer's last issue? Uh, I think it, it's a huge responsibility because it's a, a character created by Lamour. And yeah, I mean, it's one can have uh, two different views of what it was like to write. The last issue. Either you're known as the person who wrote the last episode of this long running legend, or you're the bastard who killed him off. So it's either way, either way you're looking at it, you know. I like to see it as the former, um, that um, it was a responsibility, and I wrote it in a slightly different style from the previous ones. Um, a lot of people, um, a lot of people have remarked upon how there's, there's a long sequence at the end where it's, there's no words and um, we just follow uh, a, a point of view up a road and people were wondering what that meant. And uh, it was deliberate. I deliberately wanted some ambiguity at the end. Uh, all through the John Constantine storyline, there'd been a very strong narrative voice. The voice of John Constantine had been a big part of the story, I think. That kind of voice of John Constantine's great voice. I just thought at the end, I just figured that this comic was so much the reader's comic. At the end, I wanted that voice to be quiet so that the reader, if you like, owned the comic book at the end, owned their comic book at the end, uh, and decided for themselves what was happening without John Constantine or me telling them exactly what happened. Well, uh, to finish. Um, we had a movie and a TV show based on mm -hmm. Hellblazer. Uh, you think they really represent the character? I think the TV think? show... Uh, I think it could have been a lot worse, let me put it that way. And I think that you always dread it. And it was difficult for me being so close to the book. I mean, I found it difficult to look at John Constantine being written by someone else. Uh, the TV show, I think they kind of knew... I think their heart was in the right place, and I think they made they made a they make they made a decent effort. It's really difficult. I mean, it's yeah. very very hard to get to please everyone, and to, and and you know it's a hard it's a hard one to pull off. You know, it's what I'd say. And I think their heart was in the right place, and they did a bunch of stuff right. Um, you mentioned on the movie. Right. Hmm? I didn't mention the movie. No, neither. Deliberately. Okay. Oh, okay. No, okay. No, look, I, th I thought. I think of the movie. I think if you'd never seen the, I think if you'd never seen the Hellblazer comic, and he just wanted this a bit of uh, stuff, it worked fine. You know, as a, as as um, you know, as a bit of supernatural hokum with a with whatever. You know, I think it's kind of worked as a bit of silly stuff. It was fine, but because we all know John Constantine, we we all know what Hellblazer means. It's you know, we know it more than they did. And so it's it's uh, and understand as a, as an accurate reflection of what the comic was, it didn't work. But it's almost like I don't think that was what they were after. I think they were after doing something differently. I'm not quite sure what, but oh 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 sorry. Uh, well, ah, uh, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> I'm trying. No, you're doing well. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Is uh, that it? What? Is that it? The end is okay, the Okay, good. Thank you. My, Thank my you. pleasure. Uh, guys, I try really, I try really hard here. Uh, bye, bye, bye.